Excellent. That's probably enough people to get going. Um, we do have another one in uh, September. Um, so uh, we'll uh, we'll catch a few more people then, hopefully. Um, it is one of these things that I suspect that, uh, yeah, I agree. Um, it is one of those things that I suspect will interest a uh, small part of the membership and uh, most people um, actually just want us to get on and uh, and do what we do best, run webinars and create standards and documents and things like that. But um, um, so this afternoon I want to run through um, the future structure and governance arrangements um for Artig. Um this I really do want to be um as interactive as possible. If you've got questions then please do feel free to ask them as we go along. Um because uh, I want to make sure that you know what's being planned um and um get as much feedback as we can. So we'll have a look um, at um, background, um, some of the history of Artig, um, proposed structures and governance arrangements and um, the implication for you as members. And uh, as I say, questions throughout. So um, the background, um, to Artig, we've formally existed in since 2004. Before that, we were um, DFT supported meetings between like minded people. Um, actually, Artig um, comprised that we use the term Artig um, pretty much flexibly, um, but it actually um, refers to two legal entities. Um, one is the Real Time Information Group Limited. Um, that is a limited company um, that um, currently is owned um, by Mersey Travel because directors of Mersey Travel hold the shares for the Real Time Information Group Limited. Um, the other uh, organisation is Artig Inform. That's an unincorporated association, a bit like a, uh, a club. Um, and that is the organisation that members are members of um, and play a role in. But because Artig Inform um, is unincorporated um, and a loose collection of um, friends. Um, it can't hold assets. It can't enter into contracts um, or sue people or be sued in its own name. Um, there's some advantages to that. Um, but um, it's an unlimited liability structure. Um, and that does mean that um, the committee have an element of personal risk um, in their role. Um, so there's two organisations. Um, historically, um, the ownership of our Real Time Information Group Limited, Artig, um, moved um, organisations when the chair changed. Um, but since 2011, um, it's stayed with Mersey, um, even though they don't chair the organisation anymore. Um, so, um, and, and that's really the, the, the reason that we're needing to make these changes. Um, they, Mersey don't particularly have um, much to do with um, Artig on a day to day basis, um, no more than uh, other members, um, and it doesn't fit with um, 
them as a legal entity really um, and what they're uh, wanting to do. Um, how does it work in terms of actual operation and things like that if Artig Inform can't um, enter into contracts? Um, well, that's where the Real Time Information Group Limited comes in. That is a legal entity and it can enter into contracts and things like that. So, for example, the contract that I have to provide um, the day-to-day uh, -day operation of Artig Inform, that is a contract with the Real Time Information Group. Um, and um, legal advice and services and the membership fees that you pay go to the Real Time Information Group Limited to um, enable them to contract for uh, the services that you receive. Um, and currently accounting and legal support is provided by uh, Mersey Travel. Um, sometimes they charge us for that, sometimes they don't. Um, there is a slight interesting um, thing with Artig Limited. Um, it's a not-for-profit company, which you might expect. We're not trying to cream off um, money from members, um, but it is limited. It is limited by shares, which is a technical legal thing. Uh, it does actually mean that directors could pay themselves a dividend. Um, constitutionally, in the documentation, it says it doesn't, but um, the directors could change that. Um, so there is a bit of an oddity um, in the way that it's legally set up um, that we'll uh, hope to address at the same time as uh, as the uh, as the governance changes. Um, so a few years ago now, Mersey had a Mersey Travel had a corporate governance review. Um, like lots of the old PTEs, they have a number of subsidiaries. Um, Artig Limited being one of them. Um, it following that review um, decided that. Um, it wasn't appropriate for it to own Artig anymore. Um, we then spent a couple of years talking to other PTEs and large public sector organisations um, to see whether um, they would take on the ownership of the shares of Artig Limited. Um, but we've not been able to um, find anybody that's willing to do that which is uh, why we are um, at the point that we are. Um, any questions at this point to the background and the current structures? Does it make sense? Yep, all looks good. OK, so what we are proposing um, to do is to uh, create a new company um, and effectively merge, transfer the um, assets and membership and things like that from Artig Inform and Artig Limited into this new company. Um, this is proposed to be a company limited by guarantee. Um, that's a structure that's widely used by charities and, and um, community projects, some sports clubs and things like that, um, because um, it means that there are no shareholders in the, in the um, way that there are at the moment for Artig Limited, um, and it stops people that are directors of the company um, paying themselves dividends and things like that. So it helps protect uh, members um, money better um, and controls um, the behaviour of the organisation. Um, one of the advantages is that um, because it is limited um, company, it does uh, limit the liability of the directors um, so that 
um, they're not as liable um, financially um, as they would otherwise be if Artig suddenly got itself into debt and things like that. Um, now, a number of options were um, put forward by um, some external financial advice that Mersey Travel um, so this is the um, preferred option from the committee and Mersey Travel. Um, it, the advice from Bevan Britain did look at should it become a charity? Um, should it become a community interest company? Um, but the overheads um, of that and some of the restrictions in the ways of operating charities and uh, community interest companies means that that might be restrictive in the things that Artig could do in future. Um, and so that's why we've um, recommending company limited by guarantee. Um, so um, what would happen um, is that the membership activities would um, transfer into the new company um, and the um, very few assets that Artig Limited has um, and contracts would be novated into the new company so that going forward there would only be one organisation rather than the two that currently um, exist um, and um, with the right jiggery pokery and renaming of various entities um, as part of the process, um, we will be able to carry on using Artig as at least the public facing name. Um, so we're not going to have to go through the process of persuading people that it's the same organisation with a different name and, and that sort of thing. Um, you will. One of the impacts is that um, bank accounts will change and things like that. And so um, at membership renewal next year, there'll be a bit more uh, work involved for some of you and certainly uh, us at this side to um, change uh, who you're um, paying your subscriptions to. Um, this um, structure and approach um, as I said, um, Mersey Travel Directors uh, have discussed um, and uh, have approved the move to this structure subject to the committee agreeing and the membership agreeing. Um, the committee are in agreement this is the right way, so um, this is why we're now talking to you to make sure that you understand what's going on and are comfortable with it. So um, before we move on, does that make sense? Has anybody got any questions? Yeah, Tim, uh, it's still Andrew from Sam just saying it's a similar process that we use and it's worked very well for 11 years. So uh, yeah, fully supportive. Mm. Excellent. Yeah, and lots of thumbs ups. Excellent. So um, governance arrangements at the moment, um, the responsibility and liabilities sit between the directors of Artig Limited, um, so the directors of Mersey Travel in effect, um, and the committee members of Artig in film. Um, the day to day operation uh, is managed by myself um, and my team um, and the work that I do has oversight from the uh, committee um, who you um, vote in um, and the directors of Artig Limited and Mersey Travel. Practically though, um, it's the committee that hold me to account and I meet with on a regular basis. Um, the, the directors um, really are arm's length and um, don't really have much to do with the day-to-day -day activities, which is 
partly why they want to uh, uh, get rid. Um, and um, just to remind you, the committee represents the four sectors that we have identified in the industry, operators, authorities, suppliers and consultants. And it's got um, two operators, two authorities, two suppliers and one consultant um, on the um, committee. Um, and those of you that are foundation members, you can propose committee members um, in the sector area that you um, come from. Um, and then um, if there are more than um, the number of posts, uh, no, if there are more people than the number of posts, then there's a vote, but that vote is only within the um, sector that um, that um, those um, people are from. So if there were three suppliers proposing different people for the committee and there are two um, posts, um, then we'd hold a vote um, between all of the suppliers that are members and um, they would uh, then vote who they want to represent themselves. So that's the current um, approach. Um, the um, going forward, um, the so in a company limited by guarantee, you don't have shareholders. Um, what you do is you have members of the organization um, who um, own and um, manage the organization. Um, and the proposal is that foundation mem level members would become the legal members of the company. Um, full and associate members wouldn't. That's partly because um, there's some paperwork around um, keeping track of who the legal members are um, and there are fewer foundation members and the, the amount of churn of foundation members is lower than the others. Um, and that then makes it easier to, um, what's the right word? Um, maintain the current approach um, where um, foundation members can propose committee members, in effect foundation members, the legal members of the company would then be able to propose um, directors of the company um, and then uh, full and associate members would um, vote for them in the way that um, you currently do. So it's trying to um, minimise the amount of change in the way that things currently work um, whilst um, moving to um, something that supports the new legal um, setup. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, lots of thumbs. OK, cool. Um, so the implications for you as members um, is that um, we're trying to minimise those changes. For most of you, there won't be any noticeable change other than the um, legal entity that you pay your subscription to um, and that um, if it all goes to plan will in effect actually just be a different company number. Um, the name will probably be the same. Um, and as we've um, discussed, foundation level members will become legal members of the new company. Um, they will, um, as part of 
that pick up a winding up liability um, if Artig goes bust um, and needs to be uh, closed down, um, but that will be limited um, to most likely £10, not going to break anybody's bank um, and keeps it nice and simple um, and they'll be able to nominate directors rather than committee members. Does that make sense? Yeah. Excellent. So um, the next step um, are drawing up the legal documents to support these proposals. Um, Bev and Britain are going to be doing the um, bulk of that work once that's done. Um, and once we've had the second one of these um, in September, um, we will call a special general meeting of the members um, to approve the changes. Um, and then um, we will um, flick the switch on the new legal structures and get companies set up and things like that. Um, the plan would be to get things set up um, in the autumn, hopefully October, um, so that there's enough time for HMRC to do their stuff and create VAT numbers and things like that, and for banks to create accounts and things like that. Um, and that's probably the most risky part of this, um, is new legal entities and all the money laundering laws and things like that um, that needs to be uh, um, worked through um, so that um, we can be properly fully operational um, right at the beginning of 2023 um, for people to pay subscriptions and also for things like the accessible information grant that we've got sitting in the bank from the Department of Transport to start to be um, uh, distributed and things like that from the new company rather than um, having the uh, challenges of it um, partly being in the old company and partly being in the new company. OK, so that's where we go from here. Has anybody got any questions on any of that? Does it make sense? What more information do you need and want? That sort of thing. I think it makes sense from from an authority's perspective to have the one organisation. It removes that. It, it makes it clearer, doesn't it, to be honest, and uh, seems to seems to work quite well. So, yeah, I think we're pretty comfortable with that. Tim, thanks. Good, excellent. Thank you, Andrew. Mm -hmm. OK. If there's no other questions, then um, I'll let you uh, get back to the rest of your day. And thank you very much. Um, if you do think of anything at any point, you know how to get in contact with me. Uh, always happy to uh, to talk. Brilliant. Thank you, Tim. Thank that you, was Tim. Really Thanks, helpful. Tim. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Bye. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching this Artig webinar. To find out more about Artig and our work, then please visit our website at rtig.org.uk. Thank you. Mm -hmm.